you know, there's certain lines that are easier to do in an English accent, like spotty. That is actually. Uh, go on, do it again. Say yes. Say, so say, say this. Say, say hello, governor. Fancy a cup of tea? Hello, governor. Fancy a cup of a cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all. It's all coming back. I completely back. know why. Hello? Teach you it's me. It's Hugo. How are you doing, oh boy? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Where are you exactly? Listen, I, I, I'm, I'm in Monte Carlo. Ah, all right for some. I thought I would see you in the war room. So why are you over there? Well, I'm having um, Prince Albert for dinner. Ah, oh, that's nice. Please, um... Do say hello to Prince Albert for me. No, 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 you, you, you misunderstand. I'm actually having him for dinner. You, you've really got to stop that. And why do you insist on eating nobles all the time? Can't expect me to eat commoners, can you? Well, I am a man battered, darling. I wish you'd stop calling me darling. It's bad enough that I'm talking to a T-Rex in the first place. It's just weird. Come on, we both know that's the trait of the Tyrannosaurus family. Anyway, while I've got you on the old dog and bone, I, I, I thought I'd ask you, uh, what do you think if I do a, a video on um, some of my favourite British things? I think that's a splendid idea. I thought so too. Yes, I, I, I must dash. Just please stay out of trouble, would you? Here you go. Okay, toodle pip. Ciao, 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 ciao. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And I see in the viewfinder, perfect timing, we have the uh, clock face of Hampton Court Palace, that beautiful astronomical clock there. And we are talking about British made luxury products. Now, of course, before I get into this, I'll do a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing my hammy, the darling little hammy that I just purchased. In my opinion, one of the greatest Hamilton watches, the peak of their watchmaking prowess. If you missed the last video, have a look back. It's quite a, quite a um, fascinating little horological story behind it. But anyway, we're not talking about watches today. We're talking about five British brands I use every day. Now, a little disclaimer. Um, you guys know, if you've been following me for long enough, I have a penchant, or, or I guess not, no, that's, the, that's not the right word. It's a French word, can't use that. Um, no, the, uh, <laughs> uh, I have a love for my British, especially um, uh, sartorially. Uh, well, actually, it extends into all kinds of things, but probably clothes especially. It's, it's, it's what the Brits do so well. However, a lot of my favorites, like, for example, private white uh, outerwear I don't wear in the summer uh, for, for obvious reasons. It's, it's like 95 degrees here. Um, shoes, if I bring in my shoes, where are they? Here. You know, my, my chucker boots, my favorite, my John Lobbs and my Clarks, you know, typical British brands there. But I don't, obviously, I don't wear those in the summer. Uh, what else? My jackets that you may have seen me, the, the tweed jackets are, are fairly traditional, but you know, my jackets, I, I, I love my, my Dax, my uh, Mark Darcy, my Roderick Charles, all very, very quintessentially British brands. However, as summer, it's far too hot to wear tweed and uh, all the rest of it, all my wool overcoats and, and etc. But there are five things that I always use without a doubt every day of the year and I think it's uh, I think it's very very uh, worthy to, to share with you guys. So let's start off with number five. It is of course tea. Now if you know me uh, you, you know that in the mornings I'm a, I'm a big coffee drinker however in the afternoon so I go from Italian in the morning to British uh, in the afternoon. I, I can't, 
live without a good cup of British char. If you've seen my videos when I'm in London, whenever I'm in London, it's just tradition, I always go to Fortnum and Mason. It is an institution, a very, very English, age-old institution. My family's been shopping there uh, for generations. They were founded all the way back in 1707. It's an upmarket luxury goods store. Their flagship store is in Piccadilly. If you've seen my videos, I go every year and I stock up, me and my wife go, and it's, it's a tradition. It's just one of those things. They are also a royal warrant holder, uh, famously known for their exotic foods, everything from quail's eggs, caviar, everything you could possibly imagine. Their chocolates are to die for. They also have a very um, posh tea rooms, which I totally recommend. And of course, their hampers, which is, well, it just is not Christmas without one of their hampers. Uh, another tradition we do absolutely every single year, but through the wonder of the internet, I don't have to fly all the way back to stock up. I can now order it on Amazon. And by the way, there'll be a link to all of the products in uh, the description. So if you want to have my favourite is, of course, the classic Earl Grey. It just doesn't get more British than this. Named after the British Prime Minister Earl Grey, of course. Popular classic afternoon black tea flavoured with an aromatic stimulating oil of bergamot. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a classic, so I'll put that there. Uh, what else have we got? Ah, oh, this is my wife's favourite, Rose Bouchon. Yeah, it's, it's very delicate. This you can have with milk. The rose bouchon, I would advise, it's, it's proper not to have it with milk. It's quite a subtle taste. It's scented with freshly picked rose petals in the tea itself. I would almost describe this as a kind of dark chocolate flavours with a little bit of caramel sweetness. You only want a little pinch, brew it for about five minutes, but it's, it's classic, absolute classic. What else have we got? Another favourite is the Christmas spice tea, of course. But, I mean, there's tons. There's tons of them. And guys, you know when it comes to watches, I'm very, very open-minded. But when it comes to tea, however, I'm a little bit of a, a tea snob. I have yet to find any tea in terms of quality, in terms of um, just the general taste that surpasses Fortnum and Masons. Oh, and of course they do their own bespoke. You can you can make your own teas, but that you have to go to the store. Okay, so number four. Well, it's another aromatic delight. It is of course florist. You guys have been asking me quite a lot, especially recently, what is my um, fragrance of choice? Well, I did a video on this on the number eighty nine from florist donkeys ago, I think in the early days of the channel. Again, you can pick this up on Amazon and this is another family tradition. My family have been buying florists of London uh, fragrances and toiletries for generations. They are actually the oldest perfumery and retailer of fragrances in the United Kingdom and I think second oldest in the world or something like that. Again, another Royal Warrant holder. If you go to the store, you can use their bespoke luxury service, which is obviously something you cannot order online. Some of their most famous customers include Mary Shelley, uh, Winston Churchill, Al Pacino, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Ian Fleming as well. Um, in fact, he, uh, he even wrote it into the James Bond novels that James Bond himself uses number 89. Number 89 is very, very English. In fact, I, I don't mean to be corny, but the smell of it makes me think of England. I know that sounds really cheesy, but it really does. So the top notes are bergamot, uh, lavender, orange, with a little bit of spicy nutmeg in there. The heart notes are, are geraniums, rose, very floral. The base notes are cedarwood, musk, oakwood, sandalwood. It's my choice, it's, it's my scent, I guess, my signature scent, if you've ever met me. <laughs> this is why I, dr I drench myself in this, which I shouldn't do. It's, it's a big faux pas to, to, to be absolutely, uh, you know, reeking of perfume. But um, yeah, that's, it's my fragrance of choice. There we go. Oh, and by the way, um, the store is also in the same spot in German Street. I think actually my 24 hours in London video, 
I mentioned this. It is still owned and run by the same family, I think in their eighth or ninth generation on German Street. Ah, I, I have to avoid that area. So many of my favorite jacket makers and luxury stores and shoemakers, you got John Lobbs, churches, all of them, they're all in that area. Okay, number three is another British classic. It is Kent Fine Brushes and Combs. Now, this is actually, despite being a luxury product, they're very affordable. Um, these only cost a few bucks. You can buy them online on Amazon as well. Uh, they are handmade. They are saw cut for that gentle, you know, so they don't hurt the scalp. Very, very traditional, that kind of tortoiseshell look. Another warrant holder. I always carry this on me if you see my ADC videos. Very inexpensive, but a, a fantastic quality made in England the traditional way and I think I have if you saw my bag video or my bag dump video which is not a very unglamorous way of putting it but you know when I when I shared what was in my bag I have the foldable ones which are, are great as well I'll put a link to that um, as well okay number two it is of course Carl Friedrich. Uh, if you've been following the channel for long enough, you know I have a massive love and admiration for this brand. They used to be formerly known as, um, I was about to say Prince then, um, rest in peace, my God, it, it's, it's, it's not the same world without Prince. Um, I'm a big Prince fan, by the way, but anyway, why are we talking about that? Yes, um, yeah, Carl Friedrich, I love their leather goods. Designed in London, handmade in Italy, I think in, actually in Tuscany with the finest of quality, the zips, everything, the stitching. What I love is I've been a big fan of them for years, for donkeys, and every time I buy something new, I see that step up in quality, that evolution of just the devil in the details. Every single part of these products, and, and guys, let me show you, I, I have also from the EDC, I have their wallet, matching cognac with the monogram, TGV and gold. This is for my laptop, which I'll be <laughs> editing this video on later. Match, also matching in uh, cognac. And it's funny, when I, when I first got the bag, I, I thought maybe cognac is a little, bit uh, loud because I love that very understated, very British, very classic look and that's what they're all about. If I look back at my grandfather's briefcase and I'll share a picture, he also loved the cognac so I'm so pleased. My, my mother actually sent me this and she said, oh darling it's just like your grandfather's and that's why I buy classic traditional, no loud monograms. I mean okay yes I have Lacoste shirts, it's about as much branding and maybe on my New Balance trainers but, or, or, or um, kicks or sneakers as the Americans say. That's about as much branding I have on my clothes. I like the, the sorry, I'll just bring it back. Um, I love the understatement of this. Um, it's just, I use their products every single day. Um, and guys, I will debut the new bag I just bought this actually. This is more for summertime and, and, and traveling. And no, I didn't get the cognac. This is, uh, let me just get that. I haven't used it yet. So this is their C31 um, backpack. I wanted something that I could put on my back uh, that I could wear casually like this, you know, shorts, a t-shirt, but at the same time, I, I, I don't want some hideous kind of backpack that looks like you're about to go hiking. You know, I still want something that is elegant. Now I'm gonna review this soon, so I'm not gonna go too much into this, but again, handmade in Italy to the highest standard. Uh, they even gave me, because I'm a, a returning customer, a um, rechargeable battery for my USB, so, um, Shout out to Carl Friedrich. Now, Carl Friedrich are doing really, really well. A lot of the style uh, vloggers and bloggers are now warming to the brand and featuring them, and so they should. Typically traditional British classicism of, of just good taste, of good quality. I know for a fact that I can give this to the next generation, just like I have some of my grandfather's clothes and suitcases and, and bits and bobs, you know. When you buy classic, when you buy tastefully designed, it's always gonna be in style. So what's at number one? Well, it's something 
I never ever take off my person and it is of course my signet ring and I use a English made Oxford signet ring company. They have the very traditional gold Oxford style signet ring. Now I've done videos all about it. It's a family tradition and you can design your own you, or you can have your family crest or your family coat of arms put on it. It's a tradition going back well, the, 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 the coat of arms goes back to the medieval era. That's when it started with my family. And back then, actually, let me just show you because it's, it's right here. Oh, this is my latest one uh, that I got or I had given to me for my birthday back in February. And you'll see the lion holding the crusader cross and it's in verse, so it's reverse and that's because they were used as a seal, as a wax seal. But I also have my monogram, which is my TGV, my initials. You don't have to have your family crest if you don't have one. You can design your own. And I think it's a wonderful tradition to hand down because I was fortunate enough to inherit two things of great value to me from my grandfather. His pocket watch, a Charles Frodsham, and his signet ring. One started this hobby, this passion, and you know, I, I have lots of other hobbies, but the other, is something that was very special on his person uh, and that was also his ring. Now signet rings, the, the history goes all the way back, even before medieval era, the Romans uh, had them, the, the nobles and the senators and all the rest of it, but it was the Egyptians that actually invented it. Obviously the Romans, when they conquered Egypt, they kind of uh, took it on and, and, then, and then spread it into the rest of Europe. I love it because every time I look at it, it's a personal reminder of the values and tradition and my family history. And I think of my grandfather, I think of somebody that I deeply respect. It's an emblematic and a physical manifestation of a reminder of him and, and, and to, to uphold his values and his sense of decency and honesty and all the rest of it. You know, it's because it, I feel in this world, we do lose, we are losing a little bit of that traditionalism of that of those core values of how we treat each other. And, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent, but it's obviously, it's important to me. And if you didn't inherit one, you, you could start your own legacy. It's a wonderful thing to be remembered by for the next generation, for your sons or daughters or your cousin, you know, whoever, the next generation. But obviously it's important to me and not a day goes past I don't wear this. Goldcrest Oxford Signet Ring Company have done an absolute amazing job. They're a member of the Guild of, of Master Craftsmen. They've been featured in a lot of high-end uh, magazines. The Oxford style is the most classic. Um, my, my grandfather's one, he had garnet, which, which uh, instead of just plain yellow gold, it was tradition to have your birthstone. This is another passion of mine. I, I love jewelry. I'm, I'm obsessed with gems and, and precious stones it's another passion of mine um oh and i'll add the link this is a great book so that's my five brands let me know if there are any british luxury brands that you can recommend that you use every single day uh please do share in the comments below anyway I'm gonna leave it there thank you very very much for watching please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful and as always guys i will catch you in the next one okay ciao